Hey YouTube, it's Naya Nappy, and I'm back for another Tip Tuesday. So this week, I'm gonna be talking about high porosity hair. Since last week I finished my low porosity um, series, I'm gonna start this week on the other end of the spectrum with high porosity hair. So what causes high porosity hair? And is it true that all high porosity hair is damaged hair? Well, high porosity hair is generally a result of two things either genetics or damaged hair. Genetics versus damage generally leads to two different types of high porosity hair. Generally, generally those who have um, genetically high porosity hair don't have extremely damaged or extremely highly raised cuticles, as opposed to those who have damaged their hair from uh, lightening their hair with chemicals or chemicals used to straighten their hair or constant heat styling tools or perhaps just overuse or highly abrasive hair styling products. So just like last week we learned that low porosity is on a range well the same goes with high porosity. You have those that are more normal to high porosity hair and then you have some that are on the far end of the highly porous hair. And generally the, those are from those who are using uh, chemicals in their hair and have completely damaged the cuticle layer of their hair. So what type of characteristics, so what characteristics should you look for if you have high porosity hair? Well, when you wet your hair, you may know, notice that your hair absorbs water rather quickly, yet it also loses water rather quickly. Or perhaps when you're applying products on your hair, they seem to absorb very, very well. You put it on and after a while, your hair still feels mm, kind of dry. Or you notice that you get out of the shower, you just did your wash day process, you're air drying your hair and your hair dries very, very quickly. Or you have quite a bit of frizz in your hair once it's air dries or once it's wet, you still have a lot of frizz in your hair. Or perhaps maybe you are using chemicals and dyes and you notice that your hair um, accepts dye very quickly, but also you notice your hair color may fade over time. So these are all symptoms of high porosity hair. So high porosity hair tends to have raised cuticles, which is either from genetics, which means that it's slightly raised, or it could be very raised from broken to damaged cuticle layers on the hair, causing extremely dry hair. So how can you prevent losing moisture as soon as you add it into your hair? Well, we're gonna begin this series with a high porosity hair wash day. So we just learned that water can enter and exit your hair cuticles very quickly because, of the, because they are raised. However, this is not really great when you add water to your hair because that first inner layer, which they call the endocuticle outside of the cuticle layer that's open, can swell and become oversaturated with water leading to a lot of damage from the swelling and constant swelling of that endocuticle layer. So what you wanna do is actually add a pre-shampoo treatment to your hair to prevent that constant swelling because that constant swelling can cause damage to your hair. And um, it's one of those things like why they always say, don't comb your hair while wet. They're talking and referring to people who have low porosity hair, I mean, who have high porosity hair because that cuticle is swollen and prone to damage. So one of the best um, pre-poo or pre-shampoo treatments is the use of coconut oil. And you wanna apply that to your hair at least eight hours before shampooing your hair. So if you know you're gonna shampoo the next day, just put it on before you go to bed at night. And that prevents and it helps coat that endocuticle layer and helps protect it from the water that will constantly cause the hair to swell and cause damage. Also, if your hair hates coconut oil, I recommend trying um, babasu oil, argan oil or extra virgin olive oil. I believe all those oils can penetrate the hair shaft and since your hair shaft or cuticles generally tends to be open, that also can provide a protective barrier um, from your shampoo process or from your wash day process, okay? And then next up, of course, is the shampoo or cleansing step. Now, when it comes to high porosity hair, you guys do not need a harsh surfactant or harsh shampoos or clarifying shampoos for your hair because they strip away all the oils that you and moisture that you just work so hard to infuse into your hair strand. So you guys can actually get away with using a lighter shampoo or sulfate-free shampoo 
or moisturizing shampoo and also cold washes because you guys don't want to strip the oils from your hair but you do want to cleanse the hair from any maybe dirt and debris from the day but you also want to find something that adds moisture or infuses or infuses moisture into your hair during this process so you want to look for ingredients in your shampoos that have oils or butters that are higher up on your list of um shampoos so you can have your your uh, surfactants, not your harsh ones, and I'll, I'll leave a list down below of surfactants you wanna look for. And then you wanna have oils um, and butters high up on that. So shea butter, um, cocoa butter, mango butter high up on that list in your shampoos. Some of the best shampoos that I researched and found for you guys are the Shea Moisture High Porosity Mongongo and Hemp Shampoo, also the Shea Moisture Strengthen and Restore Shampoo. I also do recommend uh, some shampoo bars that are sulfate free, like Kenosuke has a large range of shampoo bars. I do love their honey and shampoo bar. Some cleansing co-washes that I recommend as well. And I actually do use one of these even though I have low porosity hair, but I really like the As I Am Coconut Co-Wash. That one is gentle. It's very, very gentle in cleansing the hair, but imparting so much moisture without stripping your hair. I also do like the Eden Body Cleansing Co-Wash. I have a few more listed on my channel and I'll also, I mean on my blog, and I'll also um, add a video of a girl I know who has um, high porosity hair and some of the conditioners that she recommends. I'll definitely add that to my blog post for you guys. Um, because I think it's good to also look to girls who do have high porosity hair. All right, and so you wanna be using these um, co-washes, I'd say one to two times a week. You don't necessarily have to shampoo your hair every week. I know a lot of people don't do that when they have high porosity hair, and they will use that cleansing co-wash once or twice a week in between and in replacement of their shampoo. Um, you do wanna eventually shampoo your hair because you guys, shampoo is the only thing that's really gonna fully cleanse your hair but um, you don't wanna use anything harsh as I stated before, okay? So next up is protein treatments. And you guys, you guys should definitely be using protein treatments very regularly in your regimen. Um, if you tend to be on the more uh, medium to high porosity side, you can probably get away with medium to light hydrolyzed proteins. Now these are perfect because they're smaller and they kind of bind or coat the strand to prevent or to help keep moisture in and to prevent moisture loss, okay? And those of you guys who have severely damaged hair or severely high on the higher end of the process spectrum, I recommend you do the high or strong, strong protein treatments. Now I'm gonna give you a list of some low and high um, protein treatments that I think you should try out um, for um, the lighter side, I would recommend the two minute Apple G reconstructor, or you can use um, conditioners or hair masks that have protein treatments in them. So, some of my favorites are Naturology Strengthening Strands, Mish Protein Deep Conditioner. Also, something stronger I recommend is the Apple G two step. Deep, uh, two step protein treatment. That thing is very strong, but it's very, very effective in um, applying that coating shaft and preventing moisture loss. Definitely, definitely really good for those who have damaged hair. Also, you guys, I can't forget that for those who have high porosity, you will find that your hair probably really loves herbs. So I recommend you guys can do the full herbal treatment such as a full henna or full cassia treatment. I recommended um, glosses for those who um, are maybe new to Ayurveda or have lower porosity hair, but you guys can really get away with potentially having or using the full mask or full treatment with those herbs. If you're nervous about it, I recommend adding some to your deep conditioner so you can get some of that strengthening properties as well as conditioning properties. I should make reference to this and say that herbs are definitely not protein treatments, but they are strengthening strengtheners and then particularly henna and cassia actually coat the hair shaft in a similar way in which protein treatments coat the hair shaft, okay? So they provide a way to lock that moisture into your hair. Now it comes, now it's time for deep conditioning treatments and deep conditioners are again, very, very important. You guys should be deep conditioning your hair weekly, okay? Um, and you wanna look for deep conditioners that have um, water, insoluble ingredients high up on the list. I'm talking about in the first two to three ingredients in these deep conditioners. So you wanna look for such ingredients as 
aloe, you wanna look for um, shea butter, mango butter, uh, Jamaican black castor oil. You wanna look for also emollients high up on that list as well. So ventronium methyl sulfate, cedar, um, cedar alcohols, uh, cedar alcohol as well, sterile alcohol, <laughs> all of those good emollients that help um, bind that water and, and oils together to form a really nice heavy coating to moisturize your hair so you guys can get away with the heavier butters and the heavier products. And now some great deep conditioners that you guys want to look into are Obia Naturals Deep Conditioner. I'm going to say the Shea Moisture, the High Porosity Mongongo and Hemp Deep Conditioner, the Oidac Curl Immersion Deep Conditioner, and um, the Mish Deep Conditioner as well. And I'll have a list again of all of these products and these ingredients on my blog. So if you're just curious about that, you can go ahead and head over to there down below. I'll put the link down below for you guys as well. And then finally, finally that you guys have done either your protein treatment you've done your, or your deep conditioner treatment and you're ready, you're about to get out of the shower, wait one second before you hop out that shower. You wanna go ahead and do a acidic final rinse. So that acidic rinse will help lay the cuticle down to help close the cuticle and help fill in that moisture. So I recommend a apple cider vinegar rinse or an aloe rinse um, to, to close the cuticle. And I have an ACV rinse video that I will link up top here for you guys that you guys can use. You can either also do this right out of the shower and then just spritz your hair with it before you begin your moisturizing process which we will actually talk about next week. So that's it for this week's video, you guys. If you guys have any recommendations, um, if any of you guys are high porosity, you have any other tips, leave them down below. Next week, I will talk about how to moisturize your hair during the week, and I will talk about techniques that you can use that will help you retain moisture. But that's it for this week. If you have any questions as well, leave them down below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.